ripped off and some even lost teeth. A dentist in Tennessee invented the Anterior Growth Guidance Appliance, or AGA for short, and he's claimed it can cure problems by expanding or, his word, remodeling the jaw. He said it's been used on more than 10,000 patients, but multiple independent experts tell us that this device cannot do what he claims it can. Our consumer investigative correspondent Anna Werner found out that the device has not been reviewed by the FDA. Anna, good morning. How is that even possible? Well, Tony, that's a great question, and it's one we had, too. How could a device like this be out on the market for years without regulation and used by patients, nearly a dozen of whom told us they're now suffering the consequences? Meet Nick Hamilton, a cybersecurity product manager who says he struggled for decades with jaw problems and pain. My jaw itself would pop a lot, a lot of pain there, and my teeth didn't really line up, so like, chewing food was very difficult. Seeking solutions, in 2019, he found this Facebook group run by an organization called the Las Vegas Institute, or LVI, which calls itself a dental learning institution. In the group, people with similar problems discuss their treatment with a unique dental device called an Interior Growth Guidance Appliance, or AGA. It was invented by Tennessee dentist Dr. Steve Golella, seen here in 2017. He's claimed the AGA can cure problems like TMJ and sleep apnea, by expanding the jaw. Can you cure TMJ? Yes. Can you cure mild to moderate sleep apnea? Yes. So Hamilton selected a dentist from the list on LVI's website, one of many from around the country who've received AGA training here at the Las Vegas Institute. He said, well, dude, this is absolutely a case I can fix. This will work for you. But after the installation of the AGA device, which looks like a retainer with springs between forward and back teeth, Hamilton says he felt intense pain, and over time, his front teeth flared out. They were very sensitive. Um, biting into things was generally something I tried not to do because it felt unstable. So he says he raised his concerns in LVI's Facebook group, but... I was removed from that group. So you got kicked out of the LVI group because you started asking questions about how this worked? Yes. LVI's CEO said in court records he'd removed very few people from the group. But some other patients we spoke to who were in the group also said airing problems wasn't tolerated. You either get banned or you, you get a message from an administrator of the, of the group telling you to like pipe down or don't ask questions, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I got banned from the LVI group. You know, I love to question it, and you don't understand it, and you're not smart enough to understand it. It was like, oh no, we're right. You know, we're right. There, there is no other. There is no other way. Hamilton finally decided he had to seek an outside opinion, and got this warning. My orthodontist uh, told me she was horrified. She said, Do you, "I am scared to death that you're going to lose up to eight teeth." And up to eight teeth. Eight. Wow. CBS News and KHN spoke to five patients who told us what they read in the LVI Facebook group convinced them to get the AGA. Now they say they have health problems. Both LVI and inventor Dr. Golella are now facing lawsuits from former AGA patients. Hamilton is suing Dr. Golella. In court, LVI said when used properly, the AGA procedure can be an effective course of treatment in adult patients. But as to what studies back up the use of the device, LVI's attorney told us we're not aware of any peer-reviewed articles regarding AGA working and AGA not working. There's no literature to speak to it one way or another. Science is science. Attorney Scott Chernis represents clients suing over their AGA treatment, including Nick Hamilton. And the science will show that it simply doesn't work, and I challenge them to show that it does. But we found the FDA, which regulates dental devices, doesn't know whether it works either. In fact, we found they may not even have been aware it existed until we told them. I don't see how FDA would know about this and let this out there. Kara Tenenbaum is a former policy advisor in the FDA's device center. Based on what you've seen about the AGA, do you believe that the FDA should be investigating this device? I do, and I, my guess is that FD doesn't know about the device because no one is reporting the device to them. And she's right. CBS News and KHN found no record of the AGA being registered in FDA's medical device database, which the FDA later confirmed. Something patients we spoke to didn't know until after they got it. I assume that in order for a dentist to be selling it, it had to have backing that it 
was safe for use. But like, there was nothing for this. It was just basically, let's just toss this in people's nose and see what it does. There needs to be regulation 100%. I would like to see this appliance to never be on anyone's mouths ever again. Manufacturers are supposed to register devices with the FDA, but in court, the AGA's manufacturer said it has no record of communicating with the FDA about the AGA before making or selling it, and said it falls into the least risky class of devices, similar to a dental retainer, and is exempt from a pre-market review under an exemption for dental labs. Inventor Dr. Golella said in a court deposition he believed the AGA was outside the FDA's jurisdiction. LVI's attorney told us it's not subject to FDA regulations, but Tenenbaum disagrees. So you don't find this registered or listed with the FDA? And should it be? Absolutely. Who's protecting the consumer if somebody puts a device out there and nobody looks at it and people are potentially harmed by it? That's the FDA's job, and I think that there is a problem here because FDA is not aware of this device. When we spoke to LVI, its attorney said it no longer teaches classes on the device and disputed that it had ever directly taught dentists to use it. However, court documents show that AGA classes were taught for years by LVI's own co-orthodontic directors. Now, the FDA wouldn't tell us the plans to investigate, but they're aware of it now. Never a good sign when the, the group that was allegedly educating people on it says, no, nah, never was us, never happened. And you had video yesterday showing Dr. Gaella talking to dentists at a symposium, talking yeah, about course, the benefits of the event. Dr. Gaella was teaching his own classes, which are separate from LBI, but the question is sort of, you know, now you know, what, what happens at the FDA? And so we're kind of waiting to hear if we're going to get any update from that one. Just the mouth. fact that they compare it to a, a, a dental retainer, which I know a lot of us have worn, based on those gross graphic jacked up teeth that you showed us yesterday, there's no way that you could even compare it to a dental uh, to a retainer, in my in my opinion. Right, and, and what the experts what the experts would say is, look, if you're making claims that you can change bone and yeah. more, and cure serious diseases, and they've Galala has used the word cure, yeah. then that, according to our experts, it, it puts it into a riskier category. If it's just to hold your teeth in place, that might be a lot less risky. But if you're going to make these kinds of claims, then the FDA is probably going to say, well, we need to see some studies. We need to see some proof that this works. We need to see some testing, that kind of thing. So a lot of people at home probably think what I'm thinking, which is if your dentist is offering it, surely the FDA has signed off in some way. But what you're saying is no, not in this case. And you've been asking right. them questions. Hopefully they'll respond to you. Now. Right. I hope the FDA calls you. Ms. Warner, can we have a little conversation with you? Yeah. <laughs> Anna, thank yeah. You We're happy much. to share information. Yes. Yes. Really great Please. reporting. Thank you, Anna. Coming up after years of pressure at major drug maker.